and you start your recording. Everybody start your recording. Okay. Uh, so this is a midterm exam review for the Java course CS 3340. Um, okay, so I made this really easy for me and easy for you too if you are liking the program. So all the questions are programming questions. There's absolutely no true and false. There's absolutely no fill in the blank or anything else. Which is unfortunate because either you know it or you don't know it. So it's like, kind of like everyone who takes it and knows the material will get an A on it. And those people who have no idea what they're doing are going to fail it. So not to put stress or pressure on anybody. But that's generally what happens with this type of an exam. So let me tell you where and how to study for this, and then I'll go through the questions. So I wrote on the board over there for those people who can see that, for people who are watching this video, or for you guys as well. It's lecture number three is your best source of information. This lecture, excuse me, not lecture, it's actually examples. It's located in our class box, 3340. If you click on the examples folder, you want lecture three. I brought this up a couple weeks ago in the class, and I showed it to you in Eclipse. It's um, when you download it, you get a uh, you get a folder here. So it's Java programming, and it's a it's a Eclipse project, so you can go ahead and import it into Eclipse if you want, or you could just look at it from a you know from a file perspective if you'd like. I've bookmarked a couple of highlighted. Um, highlighted programs, sub, sub pieces of this that I want you to look at in particular uh, because these are sample, these are following the same pattern of what I'm going to have you do on the midterm. So the midterm, you're going to write one, hold on one second, I'll count them up for you. One, two, three, four, five components. Don't worry, you can do it in an hour and a half. You probably, if you knew this stuff, actually, if you know this stuff, you probably finish this exam in 15 minutes, really. So some of you are going to finish real fast, and some of you are going to, like, take an hour and 50 minutes and still not finish. Depends on how well you know it. But I'm, what I'm doing is I'm gonna, forcing you to memorize a little bit about Java. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bad thing, because you'll thank me for this in the future, especially when you get a job interview, and they say, write a class that does this. Uh... Uh, you got to at least be able to write something on a piece of paper, right? So this will help you when you uh, go for job interviews. So what are you going to do? Question number one. Uh, the points are broken out. It's 30 points. It's broken out over the uh, six questions, I believe. Is it six questions? Six questions. One question is on, the, on a concept that's not a programming question. It's a three-point question. And it's on a, I can't tell you what the question is about. It's, uh, it's about the big picture of what you're doing. It's about object orientation and the big picture. That's a mystery question. It's a, it's a writing question where you have to answer a question. But if I tell you too much about the question, it's, there's three parts to the question as well. And if I tell you too much about it, I'll just give you the question. And I don't really want to do that. I have to have some element of surprise because I'm going to give you all of the other questions. And number one, I'm actually going to read you the question. Well, with some blah blahs. <laughs> Number one is worth three points. And it says, write an interface called blah, 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 that contains a blah, 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 blah. <laughs> AKA, write an interface. So right out here, <coughs> I've got a couple examples here of an interface. Here's a real easy one. This one's called Interface Shape. It's called Interface Shape Java. And uh, I don't know why that's. Uh, I was going to say I don't know why that's highlighted. And here's an interface that has one, two, three methods in it. You'll have to write an interface that will include the items that I ask you to put in there. I can't give you the items. However, I wanted. To the word interface. <laughs> the name of the interface. Opening and closing brackets and I want to see the stuff I asked you for in the room. Because that's actually worth a point. Just the main structure. The, the whole question is worth three points. So I'm going to ask you to put two items inside of it. <laughs> so 
Oh, no. Oh, my God. I walked away. <laughs> All right. I walked away from this. I apologize. I walked away from this. This is why I don't record here. All right. So I can't move. All right. So one point. Let me repeat what I just said. One point is going to be for the structure here. So there's, it's worth three points total. You got to get the word interface in there. I'm going to give you the names of the Java files. The no-brainer, easy easy point thing is to call it the same thing as I give you. If I say it's called blah blah dot Java, I want the interface called blah blah. <laughs> interface space blah blah opening bracket closing bracket put some stuff in between of it. All right, I'm just trying to be as clear as possible without being insulting. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you to put some stuff inside of it. I can't tell you what I'm going to ask you to put in there. I'm just going to ask you to put some stuff in there. Yes? You don't have a population that's double. Oh, I'm not going to take off any points. Unless I actually asked you. In, in the questions, I'm not going to take off any points for not putting public here. And then inside, I, I will tell you what data type to make something. I will tell you in the question. So you're going to have to remember that it goes like this, you know, instead of, it doesn't go like, you know, this would be C++, you know. And then, uh, for the most part, I'm not going to take off any points for leaving off access methods, because I'm real lazy. I, I, I'll just put class, something or other, interface, something or other. Now, if I told you to make an abstract class and you left the word abstract off, there's going to be a point loss for that, or a couple points loss for that. Or if I told you to make this in an interface and you made it an abstract class, or you made it a class, then there's going to so if I said interface and you said here, oh, let's make this a class, then that's going to be a problem. <laughs> so, but if you don't, if you just put interface in here and you don't go public inter, if you don't go like this, public interface something, you know, you just leave public out, then I don't care. I leave it out all the time. I might write it in there, but, you know, that's about it. Questions about interfaces. Now is your opportunity to ask anything about Java interfaces that you might not. Um, if you don't know any questions right now about interfaces. But if you do, let me know. Yeah? Oh. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know where it came. I heard an um. <laughs> so the static final in the, in the interface, you don't actually specify what the static final is. You don't, actually. You're right. It's by default. You can say that you're... Yeah. Believe it or not, though, I'm not even going to trip you up with that. Okay. I won't trip you up with it. Um, I might do something like that on the final exam, but not on the midterm. And I won't, I'll tell you if I'm going to do it. Um, there are class and there are instance variables used in this entire... All the mm. things you're going to be building work together, obviously. Because... In uh, question number two, and I did this because the interface, look at how many lines of code we got. Not too many, right? So it doesn't really fill up the whole page. So halfway down the page, I asked you a question that's going to be like an object-oriented question. So that's where page number one has uh, writing the interface and it has answering this question. And the question is worth three points as well. I'm sorry? It's not on the interface. It's, it's an odd, it's a, the format is uh, funny because I only have one question that's of an essay type, and I put it on the first page right after the interface because that's where I had space. But really, it's unrelated to the thing you're going to be building. It's just like, oh, here's a random question. Like, take a break from partner for a second and answer a question. And then the uh, question's got three parts to it, so you'll answer three parts of it. Just a random object-oriented question. That's in the middle of your exam. So question number three <coughs> says write an abstract class called blah 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 dot java. I think there's only blah blah dot java. No, not blah blah blah. But that represents the concept of a blah 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 that uses the blah 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 interface that was created in question number one. So you're going to create an abstract class, and let's see. So interface shape is a good one if you're writing this down. It's a good 
good one to use as an example for an interface. I also have in here, I don't want to save this one. I should have, uh, I tried to make these before. I, uh... Here's one. Here's called an abstract class shape. So because um, I'm not using the textbook for this course, although if you have the Doodle and Doodle textbook, I have absolutely no idea which, which chapters all this stuff is coming out of. You might have to go through and dig through the concepts, but you can use this sort of like a textbook example replacement. Here's an example of an abstract class. <laughs> this one's not using an interface, but I think I have another one over here that is using the interface. Um, here's one that uses an interface. Interface point that implements the interface shape. So, but here, let me go back to shape. <clears throat> You're going to write an abstract class that will use the interface that you created in the first question. And you've got one, two, three, four, five items. One of them is obviously going to be an abstract method. Because it's an abstract class, you're going to put an abstract method in it. So you have five items you'll have to put into this. Uh, you're going to have some data members, and you're going to have some member functions. I even say this. I even say hint, colon. This is a class, not an instance variable. <laughs> I even tell you in the, the description of what I want you to put in here, hint, colon, this is a class, not an instance variable meaning it's a variable that's going to be used by the class and not the instance. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I have another example out here. Uh, here it is. It is called static cube. So static cube, okay, so shape gives you, it's just shape.java, gives you an abstract class shape that defines um, a member function called color, excuse me, a member data member or field variable called color. And then we have a constructor, and then we have a setter, and we have a getter. And then down on the bottom, we have an abstract public double area. Obviously, abstract classes have at least one abstract method. So it's probably a no-brainer to know that I'm going to give you. You have to write an abstract method in an abstract class. That's a no-brainer. That one, I'm going to shoot you if you miss that one. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot you. <laughs> Your neighbor will shoot you. No. Um, all right, so here's another one called a static cube. So static cube is just a cube, but look at this here. It has static integer number of cubes is equal to zero. It's a static variable. That's what I'm talking about when I say class variable. Class variable, not a method variable. You'll have to use the keyword static to use something. And if you come down here in the bottom and you say, what, what is this? We have, a, we have a static integer, get number of cubes that returns the number of cubes. Remember, you have a static method that gets to static data. Hint. <laughs> and we have cube. I'm just kidding. This is a really easy example. This is actually a good example because these aren't convoluted. They're, they're very easy looking. Uh, there's, there's about as simple as I can make this. Um, and then main is down here on the bottom. Main makes a couple cubes. And then it prints out get number of cubes. And it uses the number of cubes here as well. So outside of writing the exam for you, I can't really tell you anything else about this outside of the question that you'll have to do something extremely similar to this. If you're the type that likes to memorize, just bookmark all of these examples, print them out, stare at them for hours, and then you might actually <laughs> remember what they look like, and then write them on the exam, <laughs> following the theme that I'm going to give you on the exam. So make sure you're writing the right theme, but it's the same stuff. So. All right, this one was called a static cube. Um, there are not too many. Obviously, you're going to implement the, uh, the abstract method. And uh, I'm going to give you, I write the syntax for system.out.println. You don't even have to memorize that one. I give you the source code that I think that you might have trouble remembering. Like, 
if you're new to Java, you probably C and C out is easy to remember, but system dot out dot print line. Uh, man, I actually wrote the line for you in here. I said, I said write a blah 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 method that includes the following line of code: system dot out dot print line. <laughs> I give it to you. So you just have to write the line of code in the method that you're writing. So you don't have to memorize too much coding, actually. It's the structure that I'm looking for. All right, so that was your abstract class. That was a question number three. That was worth eight points. It's worth eight points because there's like one, two, three, four, five. There's five different parts to it. Uh, question number four. You can probably guess what this is going to be. <laughs> question number four and question number five are very similar. Remember Dino? I have base class Dino and from the abstract. Well, I don't, I mean, Dino didn't have to be abstract. But, uh, we have uh, two derived, we had three derived classes that came from Dino. So do Dino. If you haven't done the Dino exercise yet, make some dinosaurs, inherit some dinosaurs from some dinosaurs, because you're going to have in question number four and question number five, which are only worth four points each, by the way. So, because you're doing it twice, and they're very small, that you're only putting, uh, well, you're implementing the interface, and so you have to put that method in, and then you have one extra piece of data, and you have one member function that belongs to each one of them. So it's not that much coding, actually. It's the same thing repeated. You're just doing it twice. So I figure 4.4 .4 point for each one. So you're going to derive a new class from blah, 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 which is your abstract class that also uses the blah 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 interface. So you'll be deriving a class from the base class, obviously implementing the abstract method, and then you'll be adding a blah 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 and uh, writing another method and implementing the uh, interface. And, and there's something in common with these classes, by the way. So you'll be implementing the um, interface method that's common among all of them. Number five is really the same thing over again, but with a different one. So as an example, we have shape, and in here I think I have a point or something like that. Shape, um, a circle, a square, a uh, rectangle, you know, that would come from shape um, in that particular example. So you've been making two from this particular object, two types. And we're almost done. <laughs> I just said that because this guy walked in. <laughs> and he didn't hear me. Anyways. And that's what's on the final exam. All right, so that was, this is the example of static cube, is the example of the static method. Uh, I should, probably should just leave it open, actually. Vehicle is going to uh, vehicle dot java or vehicle details dot java starts out with a vehicle class and oh it has a counter in here too look at that it has another it has a static integer counter number of vehicles and uh, we have a switch on a switch off a get brand get number of vehicles the static method that goes along with our static data and then we have class car that extends vehicle so this is another example here and then we have class vehicle details, which is our main. So this is going to show you how to do inheritance if you don't know. This is just an inheritance example I found. All these are in the same folder, by the way. So are all of the other things in here as well. Um, I probably should mention as well that each one of the derived classes that you're going to create will have a constructor. And each constructor will have you pass the information back to the base classes so that each class assigns its own data members correctly. So you'd be overloading the constructors, so aka super. So you'll be supering back to the different versions. You're only going two levels. So you'll have to write a constructor that assigns the appropriate data to the appropriate object that's taken in from the current object that you're creating. So you'll be writing constructors. So there's an actual couple of examples in here. It's called constructors here. <clears throat> Unfortunately, on the exam, you don't have a menu option that says uh, 
Yeah, generate constructors. <laughs> but I saved you. You don't have to do setters and getters. You, you just have to generate constructors manually. So you won't be able to. It would be nice to have like a 3D paper, I guess, and on the paper maybe have the button to generate it. If it were a computerized exam, maybe, but then that would like, take you two seconds. And you could probably use the internet if that were the case. <clears throat> All right, so constructors are part of the picture. Um, so, yeah, four and five are pretty much the same. They're just creating a couple drive classes on your base class. And over the, on the board, I tried to put a picture of what you're doing out there. So you have an interface that's going to work with all of them. And you have a, a well, and that is that's Dino. That's the that's the assignment that's on the board. But um, Dino has a three dinosaur types that are created from it. If you've done the assignment, you know what I'm talking about. In here, though, we didn't in Dino's. You didn't have to make it abstract, and you didn't have to use an interface. So you'll have to use one for the exam, which is about the only difference really. And then you'll have a some static data that you'll use to. To do something to, with the with the method with the instances of uh, that you'll be creating of all of these different objects. <coughs> so you can probably guess what question number six is about. <laughs> and we have to have a main driver program. <laughs> so number six is your driver program. So it says create a driver class. Blah 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 blah. Dot Java. So I can't tell you what the driver class is going to do, but I can tell you you're probably going to need to figure out to test the functionality, and what are you going to have to test? Well, that the abstract class or the abstract method that you created was changed in each one of the implementations, and you probably have to run that static whatever it is I have you create to test out the static component on the class. So know how to, and going back to static, I didn't read it right. and knowing how to come down here, and this is what we're doing here. Cube is the class name, just like C++. <clears throat> and, uh, and then we have number of cubes, which is the actual variable name, because this one's public here. So depending upon how I have you create it, then you'll have to, in main, this is, if this is your main, you'll have to like exercise the methods. Demonstrate that you know how to print that to the screen. And again, I'm going to give you this syntax. You don't have to worry about memorizing how to do system.out. Mm, you will also need to work with object references. <coughs> and should I say it? I should say it. I'll give you a freebie here. I know I shouldn't say this because I'm giving you way too much. Arrays of objects. giving you way too much. <laughs> but I'm hoping everyone gets an A on it because you'll go home and you'll print all this stuff out, you stare at it for a few hours. Depends upon how you memorize stuff. I have a tendency to me remember if I just look at it long enough. You just post it on the wall. <laughs> you got a whole week to stare at it. You know? <laughs> Eventually I'll remember what it looks like. So make sure it's small enough so you can see the whole structure, huh? Say that one more time. The dashboard on the car, but don't blame me if you get into a car accident. <laughs> I was looking at Java. <laughs> she told me to put it on the dashboard of my car, on the windshield, right there. No, I'm not going to be responsible for that one. No, seriously, if you, uh, I, I think it actually does work. If you look at it long enough, sometimes it looks right, sometimes it looks wrong. It looks like, or just take out a blank couple of, create a new project, and if you did the assignment, if you did Dino, just do Dino again. Just recreate Dino. Add an interface to it, but recreate Dino. Do it like two times, and you'll probably get it. Now, for those of you who have never taken one of my exams before, or this type of an exam, this is like exactly like the 2360, 2370 approach. Same type of thing that you do for those classes. Uh, so if you're familiar with that, you are, but some of you aren't <coughs> familiar with that. And uh, <coughs> concept being, I don't take off for spelling errors or for punctuation errors if you leave off a semicolon. 
if you um, decide you want to write five lines instead of one line, you want to do things the long way, go for it. Um, if you leave out the word public, fine, I don't care. If I tell you to make something private and you make it public, I care. You know, if I told you to make a private static integer and then I told you to run it in main as an example here, if this is private, then this isn't going to run. Which one is this? This is static cube. I should get an error message of some sort. Here's the error message. You can't. It's inaccessible. Unresolved compilation problem. Because number of cubes is <coughs> not visible. I said inaccessible. It's not. This, this line of code's got an issue. That doesn't work. So the exam is built so that I'm taking off and removing removing points or giving you credit for points for <coughs> concepts that are correct. So if you do this correct in the first part, however I have you do it, whatever I ask for, and I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to ask for. If I have you do it correct here and then you miss it in main, you only lose the points in main. If you fix this, so I told you to make it private, or maybe I tell you to make it public or something. And you make it private or you do something different with it. And I'm, I've tried very hard to underline keywords. Like the one you're supposed to make an abstract, I have abstract underlined. <laughs> so you can't miss it. I should, probably should bold and underline it. Um, but if you leave out, um, or excuse me, you change it to make it work for what you think would make it work, you're going to lose points for it even though it does work. So there's many, many different ways of putting this whole thing together. But I want you to follow what I'm going to tell you to do. Because if you see, so some students will take the approach where I have only know how to do it one way. And that's the way I'm going to do it. And then when you do it, like an example, um, I only know how to make things. Well, actually, I got this in 2360. People only used integer. Because uh, some teacher from the earlier 1160 class didn't show them anything outside of integers. And they kept in that integer mode, and they wouldn't make a float, they wouldn't make a string out of something. And they used integers for everything. Well, that's probably going to lose you some points if I asked for a string or if I asked for a float and gave me an integer. If I asked for something to be static and you don't give it to me as a static, then and I tell you, to, I tell you which one is supposed to be static. That's going to lose a point. If you have it correctly, but you misspelled static, <laughs> or you uh, you missed the semicolon at the end, or something, missed the what? Missed the dime. Missed the dime. You missed it. You miss a part point. No, actually, depending. Some of it I don't even take off any points for. Sometimes I misspell the word static when I'm typing, because if it's on a computer, I don't have an automatic type checker to help me. Your spelling doesn't really matter. If you write scholastic instead of static. I'm going to wonder if you know what static is or if the keyword, if you, or if you write, you know, non-changing or final instead of static. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm probably going to take some points off for that one because I'm going to go, you have no idea what you're talking about. Or you write abstraction space class. <laughs> or uh, my interface or something, I don't know, instead of interface. I don't know. You, you've changed the words around, you're probably going to have a problem with it. Um, that's why I say it's usually it. You're completely going to ace it, or you're probably going to fail it, is one or the other. It's, it's, it's hardly too many people are in the middle. And if you're in the middle, you're probably on the middle upper range. I expect most people to get a B or an A. You got a B because you got 90% of it filled in, but you couldn't do it. You're a bad test taker. You, could, you, you sat there, you looked at it, and, God, I can't remember. But you know it, but you just think you're not a good test taker. So you'll end up with a B on it, probably. If you're a good test taker, you know the material cold, you'll be out of here in 15 minutes. You know, you'll be, you'll be, and if you're not a good test taker, but you know the information, it'll take you less than an hour, probably. It's a pretty easy exam. If you know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're doing, you're never going to finish it. Because <laughs> you won't be able to start it. So that's why I say, print this stuff out. Stare at it. Or do whatever mechanism you do to memorize. It's not gonna. It's not gonna hurt your brain cells to add a few things in there. You're gonna add 
You're going to add class, <laughs> extends, implements. And actually, Java's pretty easy when it comes to the syntax. You don't even have to worry about it. I'm not hit, hitting you up on public, private, and protected either. Although I will say to make things private, make things public. Um, but here's a combination of a class, a public class. This one here is called point. And this is public class point, which extends shape and implements interface shape. So we have both of them together. Not a bad one to memorize the format of. And then, uh, you know, we got some static data in here. And we got a public paint. Well, that's a point. Excuse me, that's a constructor. And we got some other stuff in here. So that's not a bad one. And then we have interface point that uh, implements a class interface point that implements an interface shape that doesn't extend shape. So it's in an interface. And then, uh, so these are the ones, the static cube and the constructors. Mm -hmm. If, you're, if you need some help with the constructors, um, you might have to actually play around with it and uh, run super to figure out how super works if you haven't used super yet. But, uh, if you do assignment number, if you do the dinosaurs, you're in good shape. It's not as hard as assignment number five. Number five is a little convoluted because you got objects inside of objects, and you got to make an array of objects, and you got to match up, and you have to do the instance of. Did not hit you with instance of. Did not hit you with um, multiple objects inside of objects and stuff like that. Yeah. No, no, no assignment due next week. So no assignment due the same day as the midterm. Actually, let me look up the uh, all the classes. There's no assignment due on the same day as the midterm. Uh, but let me just refresh my memory just so I don't misquote you on anything. I believe we're up to three or four. Three, <coughs> maybe three. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. It's, uh... I think number three is dinosaurs. Am I right? Second one is dinosaurs. Second one is dinosaurs. What's number three? Ah, uh, oh, the stack in the queue. Yeah, that's a fun one. So dinosaurs is number two. You should have had dinosaurs done. Uh, so number three is the stacks in the queues. Let's just take a look at the schedule real quick, actually. <coughs> Wow, this is small. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Oh, that's bigger. Uh, what are we looking at? August 1st is the midterm. So there's nothing due on the same day as the midterm. Number three, the stacks and the queues. And the uh, second part of today, when I get done with this, I'm going to finish up the container class, which is going to give you the rest of the stacks and the queue. So after, uh, no, no computer stuff today, the PowerPoint stuff. I'm going to finish up the container stuff. I did not put, because I haven't finished it until today, I did not put any stacks or queues or anything like that on the midterm. Final exam will be using um, importing classes and using classes and exception handling and um, other things that we'll be talking about after the midterm. So, unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately for you, the abstract class, the interfaces and the classes, is once you see it on the midterm, I probably won't put that stuff on the final. So, if, well, you have to get through it once, and then you can forget it completely after next Thursday. So then it'll be ingrained because you'll be staring at it, and pictures of classes will be all over your apartment, so <laughs> you won't be able to get it rid of it. So just have a big old bonfire and get rid of all the printouts. All done. If you make the printouts. All right, so any questions on the uh, midterm? Or on the assignments before we start the lecture part. Mm -hmm. No, nope. number five, by the way, is uh, a good one to be working on. This one's too hard, though. This one isn't the midterm. Number four is. Uh, let me just take a look at number four. Actually, I had it here. Uh, number four is on GUI stuff. So number four is on Swing. So what I'm going to do, number four is not due, and I just closed it, didn't I? Probably on my desktop still. Number four is not due until the week after the midterm. We are going to do swing. Uh, number four is done on 8-8. Eight, eight. 
I'm gonna push it out. So, because what, what I wanted to do on Tuesday, Tuesday of this week, right before the midterm, is gonna be, uh, it, 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 especially for those people who are trying to memorize stuff, it's gonna be a wasted day for you. Because you're not gonna absorb anything new. Just trying to remember all this other stuff, depending upon how much you remember so far. So, what I'm gonna do on Tuesday is introduction to Android. So, I want to show you, actually I can show you right now how to install the Android platform. So you could do that if you want to over the weekend when you're bored. Okay, so you print out the Java classes and the interfaces. You stick them on the wall or in front of you. You stare at them and then you play with Android at the same time. So you can multitask. And then you download the SDK and install it. You can't do it while you're in class because it's about gig, two gigs in size. It won't download, it won't install in an hour and 50 minutes. It's going to actually take you longer. So let me show you how to do that, actually right now, before I stop. And then Tuesday, we're going to write Hello World. You probably already did this one because you took my workshop. Yeah. yeah. Remember we did my workshop, but I got a better one this time now. I got, it's a little different. We're going to take some input, output. Okay. You know, enter in your name, and then put your name, and then we'll put a little picture on it. We're going to create a full-fledged Android app. If you have, um, if you have your computer set up, bring a USB cable and an Android phone if you have one. We'll just install, I have a Galaxy tab that I'll bring. And we'll install the app onto it, a device. We'll do the whole nine yards, all within an hour and 50 minutes. But I can only do it if everyone's got the system worked together. So if you have your system all the way up and running, I will have, print out a, I'll, make, I'll put it in a Word file or a PDF file, all the tutorial steps. Just in case you don't bring your computer, you can still follow it on your own at home. But it'll be more of an interactive kind of thing where hopefully we'll be able to build it within an hour and 50 minutes. Which is kind of pushing it, but I think we can do it, actually. I've done it before in less time. so. And then now we'll copy it. I'll show you the whole nine yards. I mean, introduction to Android be fun. So no new material on Java that day. And then we'll have the midterm. We come back from the midterm, and then we're going to hit swing. As, uh, because of that assignment, so which means we're not going to hit swing till Tuesday the 6th, which means that it's not really fair to have that assignment due on the 8th, 8th. so I'm going to extend the deadline on swing until whenever you want, until the end of the term. So I won't set a new deadline on it whenever you want. And then I have assignment number 5 that you could be working on if you want to. It's the upgraded version of the dinosaurs uses the same thing again, this person, I think it is, employee, staff, and it has the objects inside of the objects. I'll go over that after the midterm as well with a few pointers on it. And then the sixth and the seventh assignment, which I don't have out here, I'll put some Java, because I know some people don't want to learn Android, or maybe you don't want to learn Android. I'll have two choices, which I already have the six and the seven Java one I'll put out here. You can either do the Java one, or you can do the Android one. <laughs> so you'll have your option of doing, and it's all Java programming, whether you're Java programming in Swing, or you're Java programming on the Android device, it's the same thing. And using Swing is just extending, just like the stacks and the queues. You're just making a new instance of this, and you're adding this in here, and you're using that interface for event-driven behavior. And it's a... Um, we want to still look at Swing because that's really part of core Java, but do we really need to spend that much time on Swing? Eh, it depends on how much you're going to really use it. Swing is kind of an AWT, not quite used so much anymore. If you haven't noticed, people have gone the mobile route. <laughs> so, and uh, most things are Android, but, well, most portable things that are being used for GUI activities, games and stuff, a lot of them are being used on Android devices. So. It's Java programming, it's just on a different platform. Instead of using it on a computer, we use it on a device. You don't need a device, we have emulators and stuff. So let me show you real quick here, actually, while I'm here, what you need. I have mine installed already, and on my computer I have a green one here, it says Eclipse. I put it right, in, I'm looking at the bottom of my screen here. I got the real Eclipse, which is the Java-enabled Eclipse, the one I keep showing you. And then I got the one next to it. Well, the one next to it looks the same, except for the screen comes up. It says Android Developer Tools. And then ADT. <laughs> yeah. This one actually takes a little longer to load, actually. Uh, it loads up. This works the same way. It looks the same way on the Mac as it does on the PC. Just the same way as Eclipse does. 
works. If you're familiar with Eclipse, ooh, I already have something in here. Uh, got tic-tac-toe in here already. Cool. Um, works the same way as it does on both platforms. Looks just like, except for it says ADT on it instead of Eclipse on the top. And you go on the About and it'll say, Android Developer Tools, and then you'll see all these other icons for who contributed to this. This is the one you want to do. You download it just like you downloaded Java with Eclipse. You already have Java. You don't need Java anymore. At least I hope you have Java at this point. So how are you going to get this easy? There's millions of other ways of doing this, but this is the one I'd highly recommend. So I have to go www. Oh, it's developer. Not Apple, Android. <laughs> ah, Android. Uh, take that out of there. Android, developer.android.com. Sweet jelly bean, a sweeter jelly bean. Oh, man. Every time I come here, there's a new download. All right, so there's a download. There used to be a download button in here. Get the SDK? How's that one? Get the SDK. They keep changing the website every time I go to it. Get SDK. Download the SDK bundle. All right, so down in the bottom, you got all your other choices. If you want to, you could take it the hard way. Say, I already have Eclipse. Download the SDK bundle. At, this is what we did, I think, for the tutorial. That was a disaster. Yeah, no, that's the old way. That No, this was about a year ago or longer. A little longer than a year. They didn't have the bundle option at that time. Now they have the bundle option. I think it's just too many people complain about it. So now they just stuck it all together. And trust me, you don't want to do it the other way unless you have a lot of time to spend. Although you might memorize Java more because you'll be staring at those pictures while you're doing this. <laughs> if you want to, you can come down here and you can download all of the use existing IDE and add Android tools to your current Eclipse, I wouldn't bother. It's not worth the disk space. Instead, come over here and download the SDK. You download the SDK, you get everything. You get Eclipse, you get the SDK, you get the plugin, you get the whole nine yards. <laughs> and you get this little funny little green one now instead. Because it's in a separate directory and it's a separate icon to show you that, hey, this one's different. So yeah, technically I have two of the same program installed. Well, you're going to do this for C++, too, because it's easier that way. You just download another version of Eclipse to do C or C++. <laughs> so this one here, you're going to accept the terms. This is about 2 gigs or so. Actually, what's the size, say? Uh, yeah, but when you install it, it gets bigger. This is smaller. When you go through the install, it'll go up and it'll, it, it'll take you about an hour to two hours because what ends up happening is once you install it you'll come in <coughs> and um, there's called SD, there's an SDK manager um, that has all of the updates in fact mine when I go into it's probably going to be extremely out of date so if I go into the window here okay I know that this whoa I know I've got the right one when, there we go. I know I have the right one when I see ADT up here, but also right here when I see Android SDK Manager. Don't worry about setting up your virtual machines or anything like that. We'll do that on uh, Tuesday. But this stuff here will take two hours, depending upon your download speed. This is the part that's time consuming. It goes through and you'll have to take as much as you want it doesn't really matter for Hello World what you use. Um, in fact, I don't have that much on this one. I might have to upgrade this one a little bit. No, I'm going to leave mine alone. <coughs> but all these packages are for the support for the different versions of the Android SDK that's out. So mine ends early. I think mine's on 4.1, maybe. 4.2. No, I don't have 4.2. But I'm going to use an emulator that's very old. I'm going to use a 2.2 emulator. Because it matches my Samsung device, which is 2.2. 2. Actually, it's 2.3. Huh? That is old. 4. Point something. Froyo? I don't even remember. Yeah, no, I don't remember. Actually, I could tell you what it is. Um, 
If you want to optionally install VirtualBox, you can do that. And if you're going to do that, actually just go to download. It's on the Oracle site. But just go ahead and download. download. Because one of the problems with the Android development is not, it's not as cool as the iPhone. Is that the emulators are really bad. So if you download VirtualBox, I'll give you an ISO file. So bring in a USB drive too. I have a USB drive. I can put it on and you can pass it around. You can get the ISO file if you want. I'm going to have to remember to do that, actually. Download the VirtualBox. If you download VirtualBox, you'll get something that looks like this. If you're not familiar with VirtualBox, oh, and there's an update. I'm sure why not. Um, I have a, uh, which, is this going to tell me what it is? It's going to tell me, it's 2.3, but let's see what it is. I don't think it's going to say its name. It's gingerbread? Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, you're right. This is an old one. Gingerbread, yeah. I have gingerbread on my Android, on my Samsung device. Old Galaxy Tab, which is why I keep this one around. This matches my Samsung, huh? This supports tablet. I have it on a tablet. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I know, but does it support a tablet? 3.0. Oh, I might disagree with you on that one. I have an Android tablet. I have a Samsung Galaxy tablet, 7 point something tablet. Yeah, this, uh, that has this on it. Yeah? Oh. Honeycomb's more. Yeah, well, actually, you're right, probably, because this is like a big. This is like a big phone. In fact, this is a tablet. This is a tablet emulator. So it's, it's bigger. So actually, let's see, this emulator here is going to emulate a. Oops, where's my mouse? There it is. If I drag, this guy here is, a, is an app, actually. Come on. There we go. Move down. He's uh, emulating the hardware. So he's, uh, he's doing it like the menu button. On the phone, if, it, if you actually had the phone, on the old phones, it's like the blackberries that used to have a button on it for menu. <laughs> and then, uh, actually, you should have internet access on this too, so if I go to a web browser, it should bring it up. Yeah, I have it, it's funneled through. It does have internet access on it. Whoops, maybe not. Candy uh, Crush, <laughs> oh, okay. Candy Crush. Uh, whatever, let's just stop this. In here. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> anyway, long story short, <laughs> it supports just like a real tablet. Some people actually take the ISO and install it on those ASUSes. This actually installs in a computer. So uh, this is just running the ISO. So you can take the ISO, burn it on a disk, stick it in an old computer, and install Android on the old computer if you want to. It actually supports USB and stuff like that as well. It's pretty, it's pretty full featured. So, oh, there we go. Close it down. But I'll show you that on Monday. Or, excuse me, Tuesday. So, all right, let me stop this video. We are, unless we have any more questions about the midterm exam review. Or anything on uh, installing the tools for Tuesday. You don't have to do it. I'm only going to spend a couple of days going through Android stuff. But I can use the Android emulators now. And I can use Android to show you the Java concepts as well. So I'm, I don't think anyone in, in this class is actually kind of adverse against it, but I thought I'd throw it out there for you. So you're going to do the yeah, we're actually going to write the same program in Swing and XML. Well, we're going to write a tic-tac-toe program, by the way. Well, you saw it with this. <laughs> it's not actually. I have to clean it up. It's not really done yet. We'll write the same program, tic-tac-toe. We'll write it in Swing, and we'll write it in the Android. I don't think we're going to do tic-tac-toe. Well, we're not done yet. Oh. <laughs> we're not going to do tic-tac-toe, however, on, unless you want to leave and discreetly leave. But we're not going to do tic-tac-toe on Tuesday. We'll do Hello World Tuesday. Because <laughs> I have to give you the environment first. But and then maybe the next time, after the midterm, the following week, we have to go over the midterm, which doesn't take that long. And then we'll do tic-tac-toe or something. Because I have to bring up swing. So I'd rather bring up swing and tic-tac-toe on the swing and then tic-tac-toe on the Android. So. 
I also have a really cool puzzle and a couple of other games. So. Mm -hmm. Games are usually more fun. So. All right, so I'll end this.